of us have so many introduced honeybees around our gardens, we tend to forget that there are lots of other native bees around as well. The native bees aren't quite as conspicuous as the honeybees. For one thing, most of them are solitary. They don't live together in hives or nests like the honeybees, and they don't have workers to help them. One of the most fascinating of these solitary native bees is the leafcutter bee. You might have come across leaves, perhaps on your rose bushes, with neat little holes cut in them. There are always two kinds of hole, some of them round, some oval, and they're always made at the edge of the leaf. These holes are made by a female leafcutter bee, and the pieces she cuts out are used to line her underground nursery cells. There she goes, carrying one of her leaf sections into her burrow. It's an oval piece, and she'll use this to line the walls with. Round pieces are used as dividers to separate one nursery cell from another. This little bee was filmed in a garden in North Queensland. Her burrow was at the base of some paper bark trees, and it was interesting to see how she made use of their fine papery bark. She only used the bark after she'd spent several days cutting leaves, and she only used it as a final seal at the entrance. Then she went off to start a second nursery somewhere else. Here's a cutaway section of the burrow, showing the result of the bee's work. This is the inside of one of the nursery cells, and now you can see what the bee was doing with the leaves she took down there. Each cell is a cool, damp incubator for the egg she's laid inside. And when the bee grub hatches out, it'll have enough food to take it through to maturity. Those balls of orange pollen you've been looking at represent hundreds of visits to flowers by one single female bee. And when you think of all the good work she does pollinating those flowers, well, I don't think a few damaged rose leaves are going to matter all that much, do you?